Margaret Thatcher's death occupies the minds of many people. Um, those who support her and supported her governments uh, have been calling for a state funeral or some kind of official recognition of the value of her period in office and what she did for Britain. Um, on the other hand, there are those who would like this to be a public holiday, a celebration. Um, and it's not a glib comparison to make because there's no public figure um, since the Second World War, or arguably in the 20th century, who has been so divisive and has been the source of so much adulation and so much vitriol. Margaret Thatcher wins the 1979 general election. Um, she replaces the Labour government that's been in power for six years. But more important than that, she thinks she's re replacing uh, a period of, of government in Britain since the Second World War. She feels she's about to replace an entire sort of settlement. Uh, which is the welfare settlement, which critics on the right, both in the US and the UK, would, would claim has created a, a culture of dependency on the part of ordinary people um, and a sense of entitlement and has removed the individualism and has removed the kind of um, personal responsibility which they would regard as being essential. So it's quite a significant sea change in 79 and the sea change brings Mrs Thatcher to power in Britain and Ronald Reagan to power in the United States two years later. I think my feeling increasingly is that um, rather than being the restoration of an earlier period of British greatness and being somehow the historical echo of the Victorian era, um, I feel increasingly with the papers that are being made available through the Thatcher archive and declassification documents from the early 1980s that the government and the philosophy, the approach to changing Britain owes much more to that of the United States than it does to the United Kingdom. There's an inspiration in some of the American thinkers and philosophers and politicians which come to prominence in the 60s and 70s. And it's no coincidence, I think, that two years after she is elected, Ronald Reagan becomes the President of the United States and a kind of political marriage uh, takes place, which has enduring significance for both countries. And I think is a reason why she is much better regarded over here in the United States than she is at home, certainly uniformly. Um, similarly, I think her role uh, internationally since um, the 1980s has been as a beacon of democracy, as a beacon of economic liberalisation um, in Eastern Europe and in other parts of the world. So I think the external significance, both in terms of the inspiration and the legacy, are as interesting and arguably more so than the domestic implications. The most significant effect of the 1980s in Britain and of Thatcherism has been as an export has been the appeal that it had uh, in various parts of the world, various governments around the world, uh, most obviously and immediately in Eastern Europe, when privatisation and when the increasing role of, of private actors was brought into state monopolies and state command of the economy, and indeed where she is and remains uh, a revered figure. And also in the United States, where she's second only to Churchill in terms of prominence, and I think her connection with American political culture and American political and economic thinking is much closer than it is to anything that's occurred in Britain. And I don't really think the connection between Thatcher and the United States is quite as well stressed as it might be, where much of her personal narrative is of restoring Britain's greatness and is of, is of returning Britain to a, a previous position of strength and vitality. But in fact, in many respects, she seeks to undermine the professions and undermine the pillars of British society and the British establishment, so-called. Um, and her real interest lies across the Atlantic and her belief in uh, the American powers of entrepreneurialism and enterprise and small government. And so to that extent, I think she's much more a product of American um, political philosophy uh, and history than she is British.